I swear this is the first time I've sat down in the morning all day because it's not even morning anymore. to Inside Number 23, my podcast about sewing and knitting and my crafty life in general. And this is episode number 11, so yay! <laughs> my name is Katie. You can find me on Instagram as Miss Lavelli and on Ravelry as Miss Lavellia. More on that a little bit later. <laughs> and we also have a Ravelry group for Inside Number 23. If you just search Inside Number 23, it will come up. So please come and join because we have a fabulous group of people and some really, really lovely chatter going on there. So head on over, join us. I would like to say a big hello and welcome to anybody who's checking me out for the first time. And welcome back, if of course you are returning. What a week it's been you guys. What a week. I'm finding it difficult to find where to start when it comes to talking about the week I've had. It's been busy, put it that way. Um, I have pretty much worked every single day since I spoke to you last and that's been pretty intense. I work shifts so I'm never kind of guaranteed the same days off every week apart from a Sunday, um, which is why I record my podcast on a Sunday. Um, but yeah, it just so happened that I've pretty much worked every single day since I last spoke to you. So I feel I feel like I've been run a little bit ragged this week, if I'm honest with you. I have not had that much time to myself. Hence, not a lot of knitting has been done either, which is super sad. I do have some things to show you, but it's not as much as I usually do. And I haven't made any progress on the things that I wanted to really make some progress on, like my Netflix and Sew so outfit that I'm so excited to get started on, but literally haven't found the time. So yeah, it's been a bit of a meh week, but now I'm here with you guys, and that always makes things better. To make things even more better, is that grammatically correct? It doesn't sound grammatically correct. Today... Can you guess what I've got in my fancy mug? Can you guess what's in here, guys? It's the Passion Tea by Tazo. I got some more. I'm so happy, literally. I'm just inhaling it, it is so good. But more on how I got this a little bit later. An awful lot seems to have been going on in the knitting community this week, and I have been super jealous. For example, I know that the Curious Handmade podcast hosted by the lovely Helen was hosting her first ever knitting retreat this week just gone um, which was in a country house and it was beautiful from all of the pictures I was seeing on Instagram. I know both Mina from the Knitting Expat podcast and Danny from Little Bobbins were there and it looked wonderful. I was super, super jealous. Also, this weekend just gone, so the last couple of days, it was the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And I didn't get to go. And I was totally fine about that, as I've said previously. And then it actually came to the event and I was seeing all the pictures and Stephen West was there. Huh? And I didn't go. Basically, I am already making plans to be able to go to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival next year. It is happening. So, Ravelry names. <laughs> After last week's podcast, where I basically said, I don't think it's possible to change your Ravelry name, I was inundated with lovely, generous, wonderful people telling me, yes, Katie, you can change your Ravelry name. And I'd like to thank everyone who got in touch with me, not just for getting in touch, but, but for being so nice about it. Because to be honest, I felt quite foolish that I had never worked out that you could change your Ravelry name. So thank you to everybody who told me, yes, you can, and who gave me very clear instructions as to how to do that, because now I know, which is wonderful. But the latest kind of update from that is that I have tried to change my Ravelry name, you guys. I thought just Miss Lavelli to match my Instagram name would be perfect. So I go on, I go on to edit your profile, I go down, do you want to change your Ravelry name? I know it gives you the chance to do it three times. So literally you go in, you put in the name that you want your name to be, and then you enter your Ravelry password. So I do this once, 
enter my password, which I know is the right password. I use it every day when I'm logging into my Ravelry, so I know it's the correct password. And it literally loops me back to the beginning of the whole process. And I looked up and my name was still Miss Lavelli Huh. And yet my chances of changing my Ravelry name have now gone down to two. I don't know what's going on you guys. So I tried the whole process again. I tried this one day and I thought, well, maybe something went wrong and that's, that's fine. So I go on, it's still saying that your chances are only down to two, but I think, okay, whatever. So I do the whole thing again, doesn't work. And now my chances of changing my Ravelry name are down to one. I don't think the world wants me to change my Ravelry name, you guys. I think that it wants me to stay as Miss Lavelia on Ravelry. Basically, I'm going to be getting in touch with the lovely people at Ravelry and trying to work out what exactly is going wrong with me trying to change my Ravelry name. So watch this space. Things like this are always so much more complicated when, than they need to be as far as I'm concerned. But yeah, just wanted to give you a little update as to why my name hasn't changed and and thank you to everyone who got in touch, but believe me, I now know how to change it. So fingers crossed we'll be able to get there soon. A couple of other little thank yous that I wanted to say this week. I got such a thrill on the Ravelry group this week because someone posted the most adorable picture on, on they created a thread and posted this picture within the Ravelry group and that was Melissa Pearls. So thank you so much, Melissa, for making me smile um, with this picture, which is just amazing. It literally made me laugh out loud um, because it's so like Rolly. I, I just loved it. So much so that I'm thinking of opening up a thread in the Ravelry post permanently for funny pictures, funny videos, things that make us smile in general because that really, really did brighten up my week and from what I can gather from the comments, it did so for a lot of other people. So thank you for sharing that, Melissa. Thank you to everybody who posts in the Ravelry group because you really, really do make it such a lovely place to be and I appreciate every comment. I read everything on every single post in the group even though I'm not particularly active particularly at the moment where I never seem to be not at work, which is, which is hard. <laughs> but thank you, you just made me smile so much. I also received some other little nuggets of joy from some beautiful individuals this week. First up was um, Fiona, hi Fiona, who is Noni Knits on Instagram. She messaged me and she said, check your Ravelry inbox. And she had been lovely enough to send me this pattern. Can you believe it guys? This is Jolly the Pug who was designed by Louise Walker and isn't it adorable? I'm gonna be able to knit a little mini puglet, a little mini roly and ah, just made my week so much better and Fiona, we had a lovely chat on, on Instagram after she sent me this pattern and She's just fabulous and so generous and so lovely and she's a Hamilton fan. <laughs> so I wanted to say thank you, thank you, thank you Fiona for making my week so much better and I can't wait to start knitting up my own little Jolly the Pug. In fact, I know that the lovely ladies over at Legacy Knits are doing a kind of stuffy along. I believe in April they're doing, um, you can knit kind of little soft toys and that type of thing. So I'm thinking Jolly the Pug will make a lovely addition to that knit along. Another lovely surprise that I got this week was from Sarah Stevens, who you have most probably heard of. She's half of the O-Loops yarn company and the Fibre by Design podcast with her lovely co-host Lydia. So I wanted to say a big hello to both of them first. So hi ladies. I absolutely adore your podcast and thank you for mentioning me a couple of weeks back. It was so lovely of you and for a podcast that I've been watching for as long as I have yours, I really just fangirled out when you said that you'd been watching my podcast. So thank you for that. But I also wanted to say a particular thank you to Sarah because she actually sent me I believe four of her patterns, all of which are Harry Potter themed. So, so happy, so, so lucky and privileged. And I, I was really overwhelmed. And again, all of these things have just made what was a little bit of a Blair week into something that was so much better. So thank you, Sarah. And I can't wait to work on some of your beautiful patterns. 
Speaking of Harry Potter, funny that, isn't it? How I always seem to bring Harry Potter into everything. You may or may not know that Inside Number 23 is hosting its first ever cal, and that is the Harry Potter cal. Yay! Yay! So we started at the beginning of March, and the cal will be running through until the end of April. The only kind of rules about entering are that you have to knit or crochet or weave or whatever, something Harry Potter themed, so it could be using a Harry Potter pattern, Harry Potter themed yarn. If you have themed this item in some way to do with Harry Potter and you have thought about it and you can tell me what about it is, is linked to Harry Potter, then I'm game. I'm not gonna be picky about that type of stuff. It's all just about appreciating Harry Potter and all its wonder because it's one of my favorite things of all time which you will know if you have been watching the podcast for a little while. We have two threads going for the Harry Potter Cal in the Ravelry group. We have the chatter thread, where you can discuss what you're working on, kind of talk about ideas, show your progress. It's super, super, super active. There are multiple posts being added every single day. And again, thank you to everybody who's getting involved because it really is just making the group a really, really lovely place to be. And then we have the FO thread, which isn't for chatter. And I would like to um, to kind of make a point to say it isn't a chatter thread. Unfortunately, this week I did have to delete a post, um, which was kind of just a comment on someone's beautiful project. And yes, they are beautiful. And I know that it's very tempting to comment on them. And I'm sorry to have had to delete your comments. It is just makes things easier in terms of drawing prizes from that thread if it is literally just for the finished objects. We also have a hashtag, which I always forget to mention, which is hashtag 23, so 23, Harry Potter Cal, K-A-L. And um, lots of people are using it on Instagram. It's really, really great to see what you guys are up to. And um, yeah, spread that Harry Potter love around the whole of social media, guys. Let's, let's take over with Harry Potter love. So there will be prizes for both the FO thread and the chatter thread. And on that subject, some more prizes arrived this week, yay! I really shouldn't yay when I'm holding on to hot tea because I nearly threw that in the air and that would not have been good. <laughs> I have been waiting all week to share these goodies with you. I am so excited and I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody who has gotten in touch about donating prizes. It's overwhelmed me how generous people have been and how much love has been put into every item that I have received so far for the cow. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And let me show you what turned up this week. So first of all, I have been having conversations with the wonderful Magdalena of the Wolf and Schaefer um, podcast and do forgive me Magdalena if I'm not pronouncing that correctly I'm so sorry you should check out her podcast if you haven't she is so funny she's a real delight to watch but she has also started hand dyeing yarn and during our conversations Magdalena let me know that she had recently dyed up a new skein of yarn which was inspired by Lily Potter who was of course Harry's mother and she showed me some pictures and I just swooned for this yarn. I said, yes, please, please, can we have the yarn? Because it's absolutely stunning. And let me just show it to you. This is called Fishbowl. Isn't it beautiful? And I just think it's perfect because of the, you know, the, the orange kind of, the red hair of, of Lily and the green. She had green eyes. They're always going on about her eyes in the book and how Harry has her eyes. This is the lovely label. Isn't it adorable? And just on here, we have a little goldfish charm. And Magdalena actually told me that the reason that we have the little fish charm and that this is named Fishbowl is because of the story that Slughorn tells in one of the books. It's not really a spoiler, so I think I'll go ahead, which basically was about Lily transfiguring a, a fish out of a flower and giving it to Professor Slughorn and then obviously when she died the fish disappeared and he knew. It's really kind of bittersweet but beautiful and this yarn is absolutely stunning. It is 75% uh, superwash wool, 25% nylon, um, 400 grams which is 437 yards 
and it's just beautiful. And I want to say thank you so much, Magdalena, for sending this for the for the cow. She also sent me some minis. Mmm, snuggly and lovely. So thank you. She also sent me some some chocolates and bits, but they have already disappeared. I don't know where they went. It's because I ate them. Shh. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so a few weeks ago, I was sent a message on Ravelry by Anne of Woolly Wonka Fibres, who you've probably heard of. I was following her on Instagram anyway, and I love everything that she does. And she got in touch to ask if she could donate a prize for the cow. And of course I was like, yes, please, that would be amazing. Little did I know that Anne actually designed some of the patterns that are in the unofficial Harry Potter pattern book by Interweave that was um, released, I believe, as a magazine and as a digital download, but it's only available in the States. They did do a hard copy of that magazine in the UK and Anne sent us a copy. So this is Knitting Wizardry. How gorgeous is this book? And this is one of Anne's patterns this gorgeous sock pattern here, which she was generous enough to send the exact colourway of yarn that is used in the book. How amazing is that? So this is some of Anne's own yarn. It is Woolly Wonka Fibres and it's in the brocade colourway, which is the exact one that is used for the socks in this book. And this is her Keridwin sock which is 100% superwash merino and just look at this colour. I haven't taken it out of the bag because I wanted to keep it nice and fresh for you guys, but it's the most beautiful golden colour and oh, it's perfect. So the two of these are going to be added to our prize package. So yay! Thank you so, so much, Anne. And I know that Anne has been mentioning the cow on her podcast and on her Instagram, and I really appreciate it so, so much. She also sent me some little extras. Look at all these minis, you guys. These will be going into my cozy memories blanket, which again this week has been left languishing because I've just had no time for anything. But thank you. Thank you, Anne. And your generosity just astounds me. It really, really does. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoever wins this book and that yarn is going to be so lucky. So the last addition to the prizes for the Harry Potter cow this week came as a complete and utter surprise to me. I'm going to make a small confession. I made a purchase. I know, I'm on a yarn diet. I'm struggling with my 50 points for Gryffindor and yet I made a purchase. I know, I hold my hands up. I'm a very, very naughty individual, but it had to happen because I'm already obsessed with this yarn. You know I'm obsessed with this yarn. It's London House Yarns, okay? London House Yarns, who made the Four Founders colourway that I'm using for my self-striping socks. And to be perfectly honest, I'm going to lay a little bit of the blame on my lovely friend Nessa from the Kilter Craft podcast, because she is also taking part in the Stripey Socks Cal, which being hosted by lovely Candice of Pin Feathers and Pearls, and my Harry Potter Cal by knitting up a pair of socks with another colourway of London House yarns. It may or may not be this colourway. When I saw Nessa's socks, I couldn't not get this. So this is the Yule Ball colourway. It was something that she dyed up for, for Christmas. And look at these colours. And it's on her sparkle base. So it's got Stellina in it. And Stellina makes me so happy. Mmm. Ah, oh, that, that new yarn smell. I feel like Chelsea from Legacy Knit sniffing my yarn. <laughs> I made an order for this. And little did I know what was going to be sent along with it. And that was another set for you guys. So this again is the Yule Ball colour. It's not on the sparkle base, so it is just on her regular base. So it's 75% superwash merino and then 25% nylon. But it's your own Yule Ball sock duo. Ah, it's just gorgeous. Also a little bit of tea included in there, which is lovely. This could be yours. So I just want to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to Steph at London House Yarns for including that extra in my package for all of you because it was so unexpected and so generous. I'm such a big fan of everything that you do. 
She also included for me some more minis. Minis, 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 minis. Minis make me so happy. Also this week, I will be drawing a prize for my 2000 follower giveaway that has been running on Ravelry. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who has entered. The little thread was locked this morning and at the end of this episode, I will be drawing a prize. So, ah, oh my goodness, I'm so excited. And um, yeah, stay tuned to find out who wins. So before we get on to what I have been working on this week in terms of my knitting, I wanted to address um, a couple of questions that have been coming up, um, comments on videos and on my Instagram and um, on my kind of Ask Me Anything page on Ravelry. And a lot of you have been commenting on the different things that I have been wearing on my podcast. And I realised that when I'm putting on an outfit, I don't tend to tell you what I'm wearing and then I get a lot of questions after the fact. So I thought I would just show you a couple of the pieces that I have been wearing throughout the last couple of episodes and from now onwards, if I'm ever wearing something that I've actually made myself, I'll always make sure to mention exactly what it is right at the beginning of the episode. Hopefully you'll find it interesting. In terms of what I'm wearing today, this isn't actually something that was made by me. This is one of my vintage pieces. It's an original 1950s kind of novelty print dress super super cute lots of little apples on it and it has the cutest little kind of pussy bow detail at the top which I really really love but not made by me just really really cute and I like it so last week I was wearing this sweater which a lot of you were loving so thank you for that it's got the cutest fair isle detail across the front and this was actually one of the first sweaters that I made and wore regularly. This pattern was actually by Susan Crawford, who is one of my favourite knitwear designers. It's from one of her books, um, A Stitch in Time, Volume 1. I do really, really recommend both A Stitch in Time and A Stitch in Time, Volume 2, if you enjoy more kind of retro vintage looks and knitting, because it's just the perfect combination of all of those things that I love in one book. I'm just a big Susan Crawford fan, in case you hadn't noticed. So the other sweater that I have been getting a lot of questions about is one that I wear quite a lot, which is this one. Ah, oh, my beautiful colour work, squishy, double knit sweater, which I absolutely adore. And I get asked questions about this all the time as to where the pattern is from. I have mentioned this pattern before, but I thought I would update you again in case you're new. This pattern is a pattern's pattern. A patterns pattern. It's called Fiona. And I found this in our local charity shop and it cost 50p. 50 of your English pence for this pattern. <laughs> I love going through charity shops for old patterns. It looks maybe 70s, not entirely sure. I love this sweater. It's definitely a go-to and it's so squishy and warm and lovely. So the last item of clothing that I've been wearing recently that I wanted to share you is actually a dress, which will be quite difficult to show on this camera, but you may recall this dress from a couple of episodes ago. And it is a dress, some people thought it was a shirt, but it's a dress. And it actually has an interesting back detail. So it's kind of a v, v deep V back with this lovely detailing. and. I made this for my birthday a couple of years ago. I like to try and make a new outfit for my birthday and Christmas each year. And yeah, so this was my, my birthday dress. It was made from a Butterick pattern, which is this one. So it's Butterick B6094, and it was designed by Gretchen Hirsch, who actually does the Gertie's blog for Better Sewing, and she's released um, I believe she's released three books now. I need to get her third book. Um, all about sewing and in particular sewing vintage inspired looks. But this was a lovely pattern to use. I do struggle with modern patterns quite a bit just because I find that they put a lot of positive ease into everything, which means that I have to go down like at least two sizes to get the kind of fit that I like for things. But if you're used to kind of tweaking, this is this is a good pattern. From now onwards, I will try and remember every week to tell you exactly what I'm wearing because apparently it's something that you guys are interested in. So, yay. So shall we look at a bit of what's on my needles? <laughs> 
Like I said this week, unfortunately, I haven't had that much time to do a huge amount of knitting, which has been really frustrating because I'm one of those people that if I don't get my knitting time in, I start getting really cranky. But I do have something a little bit special to start off this week's What's On My Needles. Because I've got a finished object! Yay! this is my first finished object on the podcast in about a month so I am thrilled <laughs> I finally have a finished object to show you and not just any finished object it's my Hermione's everyday socks yay also known as my Care Bears share Palmer Violet socks due to the ridiculous amount of colour that is in this yarn this is a crazy variegated yarn from Regia and I just knit up the Hermione's Everyday Sock pattern, exactly as is, except I did a one by one twisted rib on the cuff. And I also pinched this rounded toe from a pattern by, by Mina, the Knitting Expat podcast, her This Way That Way socks, which I've knitted previously, because I just really love how that toe looks. And here they are in all their glory. There's been such a lot of Hermione's everyday socks coming up in the FO thread for my Harry Potter cowl. And so it just really, really inspired me to crack on with these and get them finished. And I am so happy with them. I can't wait to wear these. They make me joyful in my very soul. The colors are fantastic. They're just so fun and ridiculous and over the top. So yeah, first finished object. And these are also going to obviously be entered in for Kristen's box of socks cow. This is the fourth pair of socks that's going in the box this year. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty chuffed with that so far. I have been cracking on with my Outlander shawl. So this pattern, as I've said previously, is by Kay Jones from the Bakery Bears. It's her Duchess of Devonshire shawl pattern. And the yarn is by the lovely Kristen um, it's Vool and Vine Yarns in the Outlander colourway and I actually transferred this to a larger cable this week so hopefully I'll be able to show it to you in its full glory a little better and you can appreciate how big this shawl is going to be. You saw that I finished all my eyelets and everything. This week I have been working on the applied border some more. And this is how much I have done. So it will be little chevrons. It's difficult to tell because obviously it hasn't been blocked. But I have done from this end all the way through to here. It's a little bit slow going because I tend to just knit one of these little triangular repeats at a time and then put it down. But I think I'm making good progress. I just love this yarn. I know that I keep going on about how I love it, but look at those colours. I mean, Kristen is some kind of magical genius to create these kind of colours in a yarn. I'm just obsessed with it. It makes me happy every time I knit on it. I can't wait to block it. I know that sounds a little bit funny, but I just know that as soon as it's blocked, all of these kind of eyelet patterns are going to open out and you're going to be able to see all of the detail and the edging and it's going to be the cuddliest thing to wear. It's stunning. The yarn is beautiful. I'm so happy that I picked this pattern. And yeah, basically super, super happy. And maybe sometime soon, it'll be finished. I really shouldn't say that on the podcast because every time I've said that previously, I've like jinxed myself and then I haven't finished it for ages. <laughs> so my last work in progress for this week is something that I am super, super excited to show you because it has progressed quite substantially um, from last week when I showed it to you. And that is my Starry Nights shawl, which is of course my exploration station. So last week I had just finished the brioche section of this shawl. So I just completed the brioche. This week I've completed section three, which is this section here which is all slip stitches, which I used my um, kind of dark blue billum yarn and the variegated colour that I got from Rosie's Moments. I've also started on section four, which is this striped section here. And I just love working on this shawl. 
it's beautiful. The colours make me so happy. The difference in stitches make me so happy. Again, I kind of can't wait to get this off the needles and blocked so I can see it spread out and really appreciate all of the, the kind of differences in it. It's going to be spectacular. A part of me is kind of thinking, if I do get to Edinburgh Yarn Festival next year, which I totally am, it's going to happen, and if Stephen West is there, I'm gonna need to wear this and be like, Stephen, look, I made your shawl and I love it. <laughs> and I'm really, really grateful to, to Eric for hosting his exploration station cow, which this is, is for, because if he hadn't done that, I just probably wouldn't have ever knitted up this pattern. And I will definitely be knitting some more Stephen West in the future because I've never really been a big process knitter. I've always been more geared towards the finished object and about wearing it, but this is converting me to, to completely be about the process as opposed to the finished object. Like I said, I'm super excited to get it finished, but picking it up and knitting on it just brings me so much joy. So that's everything that I've been working on this week, knitting wise. And this week coming, I do have considerably more time available to me to just sit and knit and enjoy. And I can't wait. So next up, it's time for the love of pod, <laughs> where I talk about a couple of podcasts that I've either been watching or listening to in the past week that have brought me extra special amounts of joy or just that have been new to me and I want to share them with you guys. So first of all, I do want to mention um, a podcast that's been bringing me so much joy over the last couple of weeks, so much so that I have been binge watching her episodes when I've been getting home after a day at work just to bring me joy because I know that one of her episodes will automatically make me feel better. And that is the Yonder Woman podcast hosted by Melinda. Melinda is just wonderful. She is a breath of fresh air. I could listen to her speak all day. Firstly, she has incredible taste in the projects that she makes. Everything that she makes makes me want to make whatever she's making. That was a lot of the word make in one sentence. She has beautiful taste in yarn. Her own personal style is amazing. I love how she dresses. I love all the accessories that she wears with her outfits. And she's just a wonderful person. She recently shaved off her hair for charity for cancer and leukemia awareness. And I just think she is such an admirable person and just a joy to watch. So Melinda, thank you for sharing your wonderful podcast with the world. Thank you for being so generous with me in terms of your support, in terms of comments, in terms of messages that you have sent me. And Everybody who hasn't watched her, you need to go and watch her right this second because she is just wonderful. So sending you so much love, Melinda. The last podcast that I would like to mention was actually brand new to me this week. And that is Charlotte of the Charlotte and Gus podcast. So hello, Charlotte. <laughs> Charlotte podcast, I believe in France. I think in Paris. And I'm so sorry, Charlotte, if I've got that wrong. I've really enjoyed watching Charlotte this week. Uh, she clearly has a huge love for everything that she does. She has a great taste in the projects that she's working on. I love her yarn choices, I love her pattern choices, and pretty much after watching her for just a couple of minutes I'd already subscribed. So yay Charlotte! Um, thank you for your podcast and everyone go and show Charlotte some love. So next up this week we are going to move on to Ask Me Anything. So on my Ravelry group, I have an Ask Me Anything thread, which to be honest, is the best way to get in touch with me if you want to ask me a specific question. But I have got quite a lot of questions on there that I'd like to get answered, and I have picked a couple to answer this week. So first of all, I'd like to address a question that has actually been asked by quite a few people in various places. It isn't something that I thought I was going to talk about on the podcast but so many of you are asking about it that I thought why not so let me just read to you a couple of people who have all kind of asked me this question in different ways first of all was Puck Vossen who is Puck from Rotterdam 
Yay, Rotterdam! I actually performed in Rotterdam at the Ahoy Arena in Rotterdam, so I have very fond memories of, of being there in the Netherlands. Her question was, hi from a fellow vlogger in the Netherlands. I just discovered you on YouTube and I love your style. Thank you so much. And so curious about your day job. Many people do seem to be curious about the day job, Puck, because Vana Willemiel, who is Grace, and Grace, I'm so sorry if I have mispronounced your Ravelry name, says, I want to know what your day job is that you can wear such amazing clothes. <laughs> Thank you, Grace, for your question. And that knit life, who is Carrie, said, Hi, Katie. Hi, Carrie. <laughs> I'm wondering what is your job outside of knitting and sewing all of your fabulous creations? I'm amazed at how much you get done. But basically, everybody seems to be a little bit curious as to what I do for a day job. So let me tell you. As I've said previously, um, I originally trained in musical theatre. I went to drama school, I got my degree, I went out, I got my agent, I performed solidly for about six years as a performer. And when I came to the conclusion that that wasn't necessarily the path that I wanted to take with life anymore, I had moved in with my then boyfriend, my now husband, in London. We were living in North London. And basically I needed to get a job to pay the bills. I have done various bits and pieces since stopping work as a performer. I've worked in a sweet shop, which was so much fun. Lots of old school music being played, lots of red, white and blue, lots of bunting, that type of thing. Really enjoyed that, did that for a little bit. I also worked at a vintage reproduction clothes shop for a while, selling and fitting people into reproduction outfits, which was quite fun. Not as satisfying as it sounds, <laughs> but um, I definitely enjoyed that. Met some wonderful people, made some great friends. But the job that I'm actually doing now is, to be honest, not something that you would expect when you meet me and when you talk to me and when you see how I am, as you guys have. And that is, I currently work as a technician for computers and for phones, which basically in layman's terms means that if you have a problem with an electronic device, you can come to me and I can usually fix it. I can take apart a computer, I can put it back together, I can replace parts. Yeah, I'm technical in that way, <laughs> which is funny when, um, when it comes to actually using computers in a lot of ways, I'm not the best, but how they work physically, what's going on with the hardware, I'm the type of person that you come to. <laughs> it's definitely not the dream job. As I've said before, performing was the dream job and it didn't end up being the exact dream job that I wanted it to be, but I do enjoy my work. It's a good job to have. I'm very lucky to have it. And I've been doing that for the past two years. That's what I do for a day job. It's always interesting, I think, when podcasters are asked what they do for a day job because people don't usually talk about it because this is not about my day job. This is about knitting and sewing and all of those joyful things that I do. And as yet, my job has nothing to do with those things. And to be honest, it doesn't bring me half the amount of joy that this podcast does and all of those creative things do. But yeah, bet you didn't think that that was going to be the answer to the question, did you? <laughs> so the next question from the Ask Me Anything thread was posted by Jenny, who is Jenny B82 on Ravelry. So hi Jenny! And your question was, so I am curious about the types of tea you drink. Do you use leaves and brew tea the traditional way or tea bags? Also, what is your favourite type slash brand? Well Jenny, interesting thing about me and tea drinking is that I love certain types of tea. The one kind of tea that I cannot stand is English breakfast tea. And I know, it's very odd because um, everyone assumes when you're from the UK, when you're British, that you, <laughs> that you love English breakfast tea because why wouldn't you? But I really can't stand it. I can't stand it. And I never put milk in my tea either. I have a real problem with putting milk into tea. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me to have boiling water and then to pour milk into it. Don't ask me why, it just doesn't make sense, but the, the main teas that I like to drink are green tea, absolutely adore green tea, and also um, herbal teas, any kind of herbal tea blend 
that I really, really like. I would say in general for convenience, I do tend to use tea bags. I do have a lot of loose leaf teas. Emrys and I got some loose leaf tea um, when we were in Bath recently and the flavour that you get from loose leaf tea is so much nicer than tea bags. But just for kind of convenience sake, if I'm making a cup of tea in the morning, for example, when I'm still a little bit groggy, just bunging a tea bag in a cup and putting some hot water in is is the way to go. I'd say if I have time, I would always prefer a loose leaf tea, but tea bags are just so quick and convenient. In terms of what is your favorite type and brand, I think we know what my favorite type of tea is. <laughs> yeah, I would say of all the teas that I have tasted recently, I do think that the Tazo teas are my favorite. I haven't tasted one of them that I've not liked so far. This one, obviously the passion tea is just beautiful, but I also had the wild sweet orange recently which was beautiful made a nice kind of change to my usual lemon and ginger tea that i have in the morning and they do a lovely calming chamomile i think it's called which is a lovely blend of chamomile with lots of other yummy things like lavender and all good stuff so i would say right now tazo tea is probably my favorite but that's probably just because it's so not readily available in the uk that as soon as i get some it's like i've I found the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. So for the next question that I'm going to answer this week, I'm gonna need a little hand, so bear with me one second while I just fetch my co-host. Oh, Someone was sleeping downstairs, weren't you, buddy? Oh, say hi. Oh, he's so tired. Do you wanna say hi to everybody? This is my little co-host, Rolly. He's our gorgeous little pug. In case you haven't been here before and met him, he does like to feature on the podcast because let's be honest, he's the real star. <laughs> but I got a question in the Ask Me Anything thread this week, specifically about this little bundle of fluff. So of course he had to come and help me out. Now he may get a little bit rowdy because he's not usually allowed upstairs, but hopefully he'll be a good boy for us. So the question that I had was from fishgirl182, who is Twee, hi Twee, from the Twisted Stitches audio podcast, which I absolutely love. And Rolly is sending you big sloppy kisses right now, as you can see. But your question was, I'd like to know a little bit more about Rolly, yay! Who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to know a little bit more about Rolly? When did you get him? Where? How did you decide on a pug? which are the most awesome dogs. They are the most awesome dogs, Twee, you are so right. And where does his name come from? Big kisses to Rolly. Oh, Rolly, you're getting big kisses from Twee. Yes, and you wanna give me big kisses now. So, thank you for your question, Twee. Let me go through and answer. So when did we get him? Rolly is now almost 10 months old, and we got him when he was how old were you, baby? I believe he was eight weeks old when we got him. So we got him from the tiniest little pup and he's been with us ever since, which means he's been with us for eight months. And um, yeah, we've literally had him from, from a tiny, tiny, teeny little baby pup. And um, in terms of where we got him and why did we decide to get a pug, it kind of all goes together into one thing. Both Emrys and I have always wanted a dog since we started going out, um, which was nearly seven years ago now. Um, we both talked about the fact that we'd never had a dog, either of us growing up. He'd had a lot of cats, I'd had a lot of guinea pigs and rabbits, <laughs> but we'd neither of us ever had a dog, but we'd always wanted one. And we always said, when we had the space and when we had the ability, we would get a dog together. Now, just before we got married, we purchased this house, number 23, and it has a huge garden, lovely garden, and up until that point, we had lived together, but it had been in flats where pets were not allowed, so we'd just never been able to get a dog or any pet, really, before. Emrys actually promised me <laughs> in our wedding vows that he would buy me a dog. 
<laughs> so we knew after we were married that it was only going to be a matter of time before we got a dog together. In terms of what dog I had always wanted to get, we knew that it would be a small dog that we would want because physically we don't have the space for a very large dog and I've always preferred kind of smaller dogs because they're more, um, I suppose, he's, he, I mean, Rolly is definitely a lap dog. He loves a cuddle and a snuggle. And we wanted a dog who um, was going to be happy living in the environment that we live in because we don't live in a city. It's a small town, but it's still quite industrial and there's not a huge amount of access to a lot of green leafy space, even though we have a big garden. So if we had got a bigger dog that required a huge amount of exercise, it just wouldn't have been fair. Whilst Rolly only has little legs, don't you? You only have little legs. So he can have a lovely walk around the town once a day, twice a day if it's too short a walk, and then a lovely run around in the garden and he's good to go. The two types of dog that I've always loved, always since I was tiny, were pugs and sausage dogs. So we were trying to decide what kind of dog to get and then we found out that just literally down the road from us was a breeder of pugs. And she is an incredible breeder. She has, I believe, six pugs of her own. She lives with six pugs. We visited her when, just kind of when Rolly was born to visit the puppies and it was love at first sight. They were so well looked after. She cares so much about what she does. She's been doing it for a very long time. She has such an understanding of the breed. So that's where we got him from. Literally our breeder who lives around the corner who we always get in touch with if we have any questions about Rolly. So it's been really, really lovely. In terms of where does his name come from? I had my heart set on calling him Pugsley <laughs> because I'm a very, very big Adams Family fan and I'd always wanted two dogs and I'd wanted to call them Pugsley and Wednesday. So when we got Rolly, um, I, I thought, oh, Pugsley would be gorgeous and he's a pug and it just sounds so good. But when we met him, it just didn't really fit. And both Emerson and I had reservations as to, as to giving him that name. But the person who came up with Rolly was actually my mum because we went out for dinner, my parents, um, Emrys and I, and we were talking about, about then unnamed little pup who we had already decided was going to be ours and who was going to come home with us when he was a little bit older. And we were talking about different name options and how nothing really fitted and my mum went, what was the name of that dog in 101 Dalmatians? The fat one. <laughs> <laughs> and if you are um, kind of know about 101 Dalmatians, the names of all the little different puppies, there is a Rolly who is the, he's the little chunky one. And so our little chunky boy became Rolly and it was perfect from that moment onwards, he was Rolly and he has been Rolly ever since. <laughs> it was just perfect in that moment, both Emrys and I went, that's the best name. Isn't it? Rolly, is it the best name? <laughs> and he, he is our little Rolly and that's where his name came from. He's kind of sleeping on my lap right now but he's very wriggly at the same time. <laughs> Getting Rolly was pretty much one of the best things that Emrys and I have ever done. He is difficult sometimes because he's still a baby um, and babies often do things that are not necessarily the most convenient. They don't necessarily always do what they're supposed to. They don't always behave in podcasts. <laughs> But, um, but he really is wonderful and I couldn't imagine life without him now. Your bubble. I love you. Do you want to go back downstairs and have a sleep? You want to stay here and lick my face? Isn't he gorgeous? Oh, I love him. So that was a little bit of roly joy for the week. <laughs> and now I am covered in roly fur, yay! <laughs> he truly is the star of the podcast. I know that you guys absolutely adore him. Everywhere possible that I can put a little bit of roly into the podcast, I always will. So before I draw the prize for the 2000 subscriber giveaway, I just wanted to share um, a couple of little bits of super snail mail <laughs> that arrived in the post this week. Um, I was so, so lucky to get two gorgeous parcels from lovely, lovely people. 
this week. I have been doing a couple of swaps with different people for different things. You may remember that I put the call out for people who wanted to do mini swaps, mini skein swaps with me when I first started to do my Cozy Memories blanket. One of the first people to get in touch with me about that was Faith and I am so so happy to have met her on Ravelry. Just in our messages she is lovely. It's just been really, really nice to kind of get to know you a little bit, Faith, so thank you. And her parcel, you guys, is just so gorgeous. It was so thoughtful and full of beautiful bits and pieces. So first of all, the piece de resistance is this. She made me a little mini bouquet. How adorable is that? all wrapped up in this gorgeous fabric and some of these yarns are things that I have been dying to try. There's some One Twisted Tree in there, there was um, some Kirby Werby, Hedgehog Fibres. I have never used Hedgehog Fibres you guys and I, I, these are just beautiful Faith so thank you. She also included the sweetest little note which I'll show you here. How cute! Um, I won't read you everything she wrote because that's for me. But she also sent me some some lovely little bits and pieces. Little DPN cosy with sheepies on it. And to match that, a little pair of sheepy earrings to go with it. How adorable is that? And all of these things that she sent are kind of things that she has acquired locally. She sent me some goat milk soap with honeysuckle which just smells amazing. Ah, oh, I love it. She also sent a whole load of teas, Tazo teas, and I kid you not, Emrys and I went mental over these teas. <laughs> We've already drunk quite a lot of them, but you also sent me, Faith, a pumpkin spice one, which I'm so excited to have. It was so thoughtful. Everything in there was absolutely beautiful and so well thought out and I just want to say, Faith, thank you. Thank you so much. And I really hope that your parcel gets to you soon because I just panic so much when it comes to sending things overseas and I get really nervous. So fingers crossed, your minis will be with you soon. The next lovely parcel of joy that arrived for me this week was actually a part of um, a swap that's being hosted by Mina of the Knitting Expat podcast. It is the Expat Yarn Swap. And the idea behind this swap was that you get paired up with someone who's from a different country from you, just a different kind of place than you, and you send them some yarn that's kind of available where you are that may not be something that's available where they are. So everybody's getting exposed to lots of different yarn companies and also you can send other little treats in the parcel. So I was paired up with the amazing Jen. Jen is Jen from Jersey on Instagram and Ravelry. And from the minute that we started talking, I was so, so happy to have been partnered up with her because she's so interesting and so passionate. Every time she sent me a note, it wasn't just a couple of lines. It was a full letter every time she wrote to me, which was just wonderful because it really felt that we were kind of pen friends rather than just, oh yeah, I'm gonna send you a swap, what do you want, <laughs> type thing. And I can't tell you how amazing the parcel was that she sent me. So first of all, it arrived on St. Patrick's Day and look at the card she sent. <laughs> it's so cute, so, so funny. Yeah, she sent so much stuff in this box. I was not expecting it, Jen. I really, really wasn't. And I'm just, just blown away by your generosity. She sent a whole bag full of teas, including the passion tea, the Tazo passion tea that I've been drinking today. She sent me a whole bunch of those, lots of other different flavored teas. She sent a whole bag of sweets, which may have magically disappeared at this point, <laughs> but it was so generous. And also she sent some incredible yarn. Look at this color, you guys. So there are golds, greys, whites, kind of tans, and the whole thing is full of Stellina. And I just love it. 
It is called Twinkle Twist, this yarn, and it is Superwash Merino, Nylon and Stellina, and the company are called Unplanned Peacock Studio. And the idea behind this studio is that they don't repeat their colourways. Um, they say each skein is hand-dyed and unique, and basically every single one is individual, so no one else anywhere is going to have this yarn. This is just mine. <laughs> She also sent me a huge load of minis, <laughs> all of which are labelled, not just with what the yarn is, but the project that Jen used them for. So, for example, this one is um, Zen Yarn, um, which is a one of a kind, and it was the first ever Zen that Jen knit with, which is so lovely to have a little piece of that. She sent me a whole load of little stitch markers and progress keepers that she has made herself. But the thing that really, really touched me, if I'm honest with you, and basically made me cry was, um, she made me some super special little bits. She made me a snitch! <laughs> Isn't it adorable? It's my own little golden snitch and my own little mini Weasley jumper. Let's put the snitch on the jumper. The snitch looks good in the jumper. <laughs> but just gorgeous. And she sent me a message to say that she actually was working on these whilst watching Harry Potter on the TV. And I just feel that the Harry Potter love has been spread into the world and that makes me so happy. So yeah, suffice it to say, I have been so spoilt this week and I just want to thank you. Thank you to anyone who sent me anything. Thank you to anyone who has kind of commented in the Ravelry groups. Thank you to anyone who has messaged me because it has been a bit of a bleary week in terms of my 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 work life and that type of thing but you guys every single one of you make my life better every day so thank you and i love you all and on that note how's about i do a little prize draw for the 2000 follower giveaway yay so this is actually turning out to be um <laughs> a bit of a funny giveaway because just this morning I checked and I think I'm pretty much close to 3,000 subscribers now, which is insane. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I might need to do another giveaway at some point if this continues because you guys are just awesome. In terms of the 2,000 follower giveaway, I opened a thread in my Ravelry group and I asked what was the thing that you most wanted to do or achieve or go or do or see that was on your bucket list and I got an insane response from you guys. I think when I closed the thread there were 574 entries which is just incredible so thank you to everybody who got involved. I just want to go through the prizes one more time. So you may recall that lovely Deb of Fondant Fibre was generous enough to donate a skein of her yarn and um, this is Dickens DK which is organic merino non-superwash in her rose cream colour. She also sent some of her knitter's soap to go along with it and I have run up a super special little prize to go with this. I made you guys a project bag! <laughs> I'm really happy with this project bag, I really, really am. And it is super special to me because if you've been watching my podcast since the very beginning, you'll recognize this fabric. I've had this fabric in my stash for a very long time. It's Little Red Riding Hood themed and I had a lot of it left over, so I'm still gonna be able to make the shirt that I wanted to make from it. But because it's so special, I wanted to share it with you guys. Not just that, you might notice at the bottom this lovely wool fabric is some of the Italian wool that I recently used for my um, Franken dress. So you'll have a little bit of me with you. And I've also added a little detail of some lace and ribbon. The lace is from my stash. It's vintage lace that I've had for a very, very long time. But this ribbon, this burgundy ribbon, was actually something that I used to tie up all the favours 
for my wedding. So <laughs> this is very, very personal to me and I'm just really excited that one of you guys is gonna have it. Um, I've also lined it in some, some floral fabric, which I thought was particularly appropriate for the kind of woodland theme. And I think it looks really, really pretty with the yarn that was donated so kindly by Deb. So I hope you like the first ever Inside Number 23 project bag. Um, I hope that whoever goes to it will, will love using it and will give it a good home. Um, in addition to the yarn and the bag and the knitter soap, I am also going to pop some additional treats in here. Some yummy sweets that are my particular favourites and some yummy tea as well. Okay, let's see if we can draw a winner, shall we? So I am using my husband's iPad. I am going onto a random number generator. So I put minimum two, maximum 574 because that's how many posts were in when I locked the thread this morning and the result is 177 so let me try and find post 177 bear with me <laughs> and the winner is Linda Dawn 64 yay Linda and your comment was congratulations on reaching 2,000 wow subscribers I know right wow um that is pretty awesome thank you my crafting bucket list would be to go on a knitting retreat or attend a yarn festival I live quite a distance from my nearest one so it would need to be a few days for a trip using public transport eek on the plus side public transport journeys give lots of knitting time yay you are so right um, um, congratulations so Linda oh my goodness you're in Herefordshire in the United Kingdom that's so funny usually with these type of things you always end up sending to a different country so that's so exciting you're not too far away from me then then Linda but you have won the project bag with the yarn with the um with the knitter soap and the sweets and the tea and please please get in touch with me um drop me a line on Ravelry once you have seen this and um, please send me your address and I will send that off to you as soon as you have sent me your details. So thank you so, so much. Oh my goodness, that was so exciting. That's the first ever giveaway that I have ever done on the podcast. So yay! <laughs> so guys, that's about everything that I've got for you this week. Um, this week coming, like I said, I'm going to have so much more time to do exactly what I want. I'm going to do so much knitting, it's going to be unreal. So hopefully I'll have some more interesting bits and pieces to share with you next week. Also, fingers crossed, I'm going to get cracking with some sewing and maybe even some spinning. I know, how exciting would that be? If you like what you've seen here, please subscribe, please like the video. I do upload every week on a Monday. Come and join the Ravelry group, come and join in with the Harry Potter cal if that's your thing, or just check out the, the chatter thread and the FO thread because there's some incredible stuff on there, you guys. It's absolutely amazing, and that group just brings me so much joy. I just wanted to say thank you all for watching. Thank you for sticking with me week after week and for generally making my life a better place. But for now, happy sewing, happy knitting, and I'll see you all soon. Bye! Beats so that I can hardly speak. I just, I just, I know this is old news, but I love this tea. It warms me to my very soul.